The CH-53K King Stallion stands as the most powerful helicopter the Pentagon has ever commissioned, engineered to haul three times what its predecessor could carry while flying faster and farther than anyone thought possible. However, here's what makes this machine truly remarkable, how it gets built from the ground up. Engineers had to rethink power, control, and construction to make this possible. So, stay with us as we uncover how the CH-53K was engineered, and what makes its genius design stand apart. Digital Revolution Takes Flight Walk into Sikorsky's manufacturing facility, and you immediately notice something different. No stacks of paper blueprints, no workers squinting at technical drawings. Instead, technicians carry tablets displaying three-dimensional holographic models that rotate and zoom at their fingertips. This is where the CH-53K program left half a century of helicopter manufacturing tradition behind. The shift started in 2006, when Sikorsky made a bold decision. They would design the entire King Stallion using Katya, a 3D digital modeling system, instead of traditional two-dimensional drawings. Every bolt, every wire, and every component existed first in the digital realm. Workers use a system called Right Hemisphere that projects full-color 3D models directly onto their tablets. They can spin the image 360 degrees, zoom into microscopic details, and see exactly how parts fit together before touching a single tool. But why does this matter? Because when you're building the largest helicopter in the US military, mistakes cost millions. Traditional blueprints meant finding interface problems only after parts arrived on the assembly floor. With Katia modeling, engineers spotted conflicts before metal ever met metal. They could see when two components occupied the same space, when clearances were too tight, or when installation sequences wouldn't work. The precision is staggering. Installation instructions now appear in 3D, showing torque values, hardware specifications, and attachment angles all in real time. A mechanic installing hydraulic lines can rotate the model to see the backside without crawling into cramped spaces with a flashlight and crumpled paper. The learning curve shortened dramatically. New workers understood complex assemblies in days instead of weeks. This digital foundation didn't just make the manufacturing process easier, it created an entire ecosystem where lessons learned from test flights could flow directly back into the build process, and where maintenance data from deployed aircraft could update production procedures overnight. However, all this digital sophistication would mean nothing without the raw power to back it up. 22,500 horses unleashed. Three massive turbine engines sit mounted on the assembly stand, each one generating enough power to lift a fully loaded semi-truck straight into the sky. The General Electric T408 represents a quantum leap in helicopter propulsion, and understanding why requires looking at what came before. The CH-53E Super Stallion, the helicopter the King Stallion replaces, struggled in hot and high conditions. Thin air at altitude combined with scorching desert heat meant reduced lift capacity exactly when Marines needed maximum performance. The old engines delivered 4,380 shaft horsepower each, respectable but not enough. General Electric's solution involves starting from scratch. Each T408 engine produces 7,500 shaft horsepower, a 71% increase in raw power. But here's the engineering brilliance. The T408 accomplishes this while consuming 18% less fuel and featuring 63% fewer parts than the previous generation. Fewer parts mean easier maintenance. Less fuel consumption means longer range. More power means carrying armored vehicles where helicopters previously couldn't go. The engine's architecture reflects modern gas turbine technology, a six-stage compressor section, five axial flow stages feeding into one centrifugal stage pressurizes incoming air, then a five-stage turbine section split between two high-pressure and three low-pressure stages extracts energy with brutal efficiency. Digital electronic controls monitor every parameter thousands of times per second, adjusting fuel flow and preventing dangerous operating conditions before they develop. During testing, the T408 sustained 7,600 shaft horsepower and achieved peaks of 8,300 shaft horsepower, numbers that seemed impossible just a decade earlier. Still, raw power alone doesn't make a helicopter. That power has to transfer through a transmission system capable of handling forces that would destroy conventional gearboxes, and 
that's where things get really interesting. Building the Split Torque Beast. The main gearbox assembly sits center stage in the manufacturing facility, a mechanical masterpiece weighing 5,270 pounds. This isn't a traditional helicopter transmission. This is what engineers call a split torque design, and it represents the genius design of CH-53K in its purest mechanical form. Traditional helicopter gearboxes root all engine power through a single gear train, simple but limited. As you add power, gear teeth experience crushing loads that eventually cause failure. Sikorsky's engineers spent years developing an alternative, split the torque across multiple paths through the gearbox, distributing forces so no single component takes the full beating. Development started around 2007 and problems emerged immediately. Titanium quill shafts, the rotating members that distribute power between torque paths failed during bench testing. Engineers redesigned them, tested again, failed again. The program's first flight, scheduled for 2011, slipped to 2015, while metallurgists and designers fought to create quill shafts capable of surviving the mechanical violence inside this gearbox. They eventually succeeded, but the solution involved exotic titanium alloys and manufacturing tolerances measured in thousandths of an inch. The complete gearbox assembly, including rotor hub and rotating control system, System, weighs 11,650 pounds. That's heavier than an empty Black Hawk helicopter. For comparison, Russia's Mi-26 helicopter, currently the world's largest production helicopter, uses a split-torque gearbox weighing 8,020 pounds. The CH-53K's gearbox is 45% heavier, handling forces from three engines instead of two. Inside the gearbox housing, precision ground gears mesh with tolerances so tight that assembly requires climate-controlled clean rooms. Contamination from a grain of sand could score gear faces and trigger catastrophic failure. Ball bearings the size of grapefruits support rotating shafts under loads exceeding 50,000 pounds. All this mechanical sophistication needs something to push against, and that's where the composite rotor blades enter the story, forging the composite wings. At 35 feet long and nearly 3 feet wide, each main rotor blade contains more advanced composite material technology than entire aircraft built just 20 years ago. Seven of these massive blades will eventually spin atop the King's Stallion, and manufacturing each one demands precision that borders on obsessive. The blades represent Sikorsky's fourth-generation composite rotor technology, building on lessons learned since the company started making composite blades for the Black Hawk in the early 1970s, but these aren't Black Hawk blades scaled up. The CH-53K blade has 12% more surface area than the CH-53E blade it replaces, engineered to handle 71% more power while maintaining structural integrity under forces that would tear standard metal blades apart. Inside Sikorsky's Connecticut blade facility, massive autoclaves stretch 55 feet long. These pressure ovens cure composite materials at controlled temperatures and pressures, transforming layers of carbon fiber and resin into solid structures stronger than steel at a fraction of the weight. The facility currently houses two autoclaves, with a third under construction to handle production ramp-up. Each blade features advanced geometric shaping, with unique airfoils at different span positions optimized for specific flight conditions. The blade tips sweep back in an anhedral configuration, reducing noise and vibration while improving aerodynamic efficiency. This swept tip design also enhances hover performance, critical when lifting maximum loads in confined landing zones. Unlike the CH-53E's metal core blades that use pressurized titanium spars, the King Stallion blade is all composite. This eliminates a major maintenance headache. E-model blades constantly lost pressure from their spars, grounding aircraft until repairs could be completed. The K-model blade has no pressurized components to leak. It's also flaw tolerant, meaning small manufacturing imperfections won't propagate into larger cracks during operation. But even the most advanced blades need somewhere to attach. And that brings us to the fuselage that Spirit Aerosystems delivers to Sikorsky's final assembly line, the glass cockpit revolution. Step into the CH-53K cockpit, and you've entered a different era of aviation. Five large multi-function displays dominate the instrument panel. Two control display units provide backup interfaces. 
Traditional round gauges and mechanical instruments have vanished entirely. This is the Joint Interoperable Common Avionics Architecture System, and it represents the genius design of CH-53K translated into the pilot vehicle interface. The CAAS glass cockpit doesn't just display information differently, it fundamentally changes how pilots interact with 88,000 pounds of helicopter. Behind those screens runs sophisticated software that processes sensor data, manages flight systems, and presents information in intuitive formats that reduce pilot workload dramatically. However, the real revolution sits beneath the cockpit floor. Full authority digital fly-by-wire flight controls replace the mechanical linkages that connected control sticks to rotor swash plates in previous generations. When a pilot moves the cyclic stick, computers interpret that input, factor in current flight conditions, and command actuators to adjust rotor blade pitch. The system includes haptic feedback and physical resistance in the controls that provide tactile cues about flight envelope limits. This fly-by-wire architecture enables capabilities impossible with mechanical controls. The computer can automatically stabilize the helicopter in gusty winds, maintain precise hover and zero visibility, and prevent pilots from inadvertently entering dangerous flight regimes. During the approach to a ship pitching in heavy seas, the system predicts deck movement and adjusts automatically, timing the landing for optimal ship position. The cockpit field of view expanded to twice that of the CH-53E. Larger windows positioned higher provide better situational awareness during nap of earth flight and confined area operations. Pilots can see rotor tips without contorting in their seats, critical when maneuvering in tight spaces. However, cockpit sophistication means nothing if the airframe falls apart. That's why Spirit Aero System's composite fuselage had to meet standards never before demanded of a production helicopter. Final Assembly Line Secrets The fuselage arrives at Sikorsky's West Palm Beach facility in one piece. Spirit Aero Systems in Wichita, Kansas, builds the entire cockpit and cabin section before shipping it to Florida for final assembly. What arrives isn't just a shell, it's a lightweight composite structure designed for a 10,000-hour service life, already containing miles of wiring and hundreds of system components. The final assembly line operates differently from traditional aircraft manufacturing. Instead of building helicopters in a fixed location with workers moving around the airframe, Sikorsky uses a four-station flow system. Each helicopter moves through stations on air bearings, cushions of compressed air that allow workers to glide massive structures across the factory floor with minimal effort. Station 1 focuses on installing power plants and transmission systems. Workers use specialized lifting equipment because the three T408 engines and main gearbox assembly weigh over 18,000 pounds combined. Engine mounts must align within thousandths of an inch to prevent vibration and premature wear. Station 2 handles hydraulic systems, flight controls, and avionic installations. The helicopter at this station bristles with scaffolding as technicians work at multiple levels simultaneously. Station 3 integrates rotor systems. The main rotor hub, seven composite blades, and tail rotor assembly all come together. Each blade attachment point gets torqued to exact specifications using calibrated tools that record every value digitally. Station 4 completes final systems checks, installs mission equipment, and prepares the aircraft for ground testing. Throughout the assembly, the 3D CADIA models continue guiding the work. When installing hydraulic lines through tight spaces, mechanics reference their tablets to see the optimal routing path. When troubleshooting electrical issues, technicians pull up wire diagrams that highlight specific circuits in 3D space. The ergonomic challenges of building something this large require custom tooling. Work stands adjust to multiple heights. Platforms extend and retract. All of this precision manufacturing leads to one critical moment. Testing the Triple Threat Machine October 27, 2015, West Palm Beach, Florida Chief Experimental Test Pilot Stephen McCulley lifts the first CH-53K into a hover for the first time. 30 minutes of cautious maneuvering prove the helicopter can fly, but proving it can do what the Marines need requires two years of brutal testing. The ground test vehicle came first. A fully operational CH-53K is bolted to a massive test stand. This aircraft never flies, but runs through every flight regime on the ground. Engines scream at full power. Rotor blades spin at operational speeds. Systems cycle through normal and emergency procedures thousands of times, accumulating data 
data that validates computer models and exposes weaknesses before the aircraft starts carrying Marines. Four engineering development models join the flight test program, each one instrumented with thousands of sensors measuring strain, temperature, pressure, and vibration. These models push the boundaries of the aircraft, maximum gross weight lifts, high-altitude hover tests in scorching heat, shipboard operations on pitching decks, air-to-air -air refueling from tankers while cruising at 170 knots. March 7, 2018 marked a watershed moment. A CH-53K lifted 36,000 pounds on its external cargo hook, the maximum rated capacity. For context, that's the weight of a light-armored vehicle dangling beneath the helicopter. The test validated not just the engines and transmission, but the entire airframe structure, the cargo hook system, and the flight control laws that keep the helicopter stable while hauling such load. The capability numbers tell the complete story. The CH-53K can carry 27,000 pounds to a radius of 110 nautical miles in 91 degree heat at 3,000 feet altitude. That's nearly triple what the CH-53E can manage in identical conditions. And that's why the CH-53K King Stallion isn't just another helicopter. It's a triumph of engineering, innovation, and relentless problem solving. From the digital models that revolutionized its design to engines, gearboxes, and rotor blades that pushed the limits of physics, every element was crafted to exceed what was thought possible. It's a machine built not just to lift, but to redefine the boundaries of flight, proving that when engineering meets ambition, the sky is no longer the limit. Which part of the King Stallion blew your mind the most? The engines, the split-torque gearbox, or the composite rotor blades? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating content. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.